There are people who don't love the forms and don't love the uh, inner sides. They are not busy with the beauties of things and they don't bother about the wisdom people have. They are busy about business. All they look at is the bottom line. You scratch my back, I scratch yours, as they say in the English language. They love things only for some benefit. If there is some benefit, if there is some business, if, if there is something I could earn, I could win, then I love it. For those people, we end up giving example of the favors Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does to you. We said that you love Allah because Allah provides. So it's natural. And there is a piece of uh, tradition usually quoted as words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but it is not. جُبِلَتِ الْقُلُوبُ عَلَىٰ حُبِّ مَنْ أَحْسَنَ إِلَيْهَا These are words of one of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. His words, he says, جُبِلَتِ الْقُلُوبُ عَلَىٰ حُبِّ مَنْ أَحْسَنَ إِلَيْهَا Hearts are made to love those who do them good. Love, hearts are made. So you extend favors to people, people will love you. So if you want to love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on that level, and if this is the principle of your life, you love your friends only and when they do you good, when they don't, then you leave them, then you have to love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa even for that reason. Because no one on the face of the earth has done you any favor more and better than the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And I'm addressing here all people, all mankind, including non-Muslims. For us Muslims and for non-Muslims alike, his favors upon us are so many. Because before Islam, if any community rebelled against their messenger, they would be punished immediately. Because of the mercy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his message is full of mercy. And the central figure of his message is mercy, rahmah. Because of his mercy, Allah delayed punishment. For us sinners, when we transgress against God, Allah doesn't inflict the punishment upon us immediately. Also the unbelievers, with all their rebelliousness against God, with all their blasphemy against God, Allah doesn't inflict the punishments upon them immediately. It is because of the mercy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. It is because of him sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam that we are enjoying now this life and enjoying this, these bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, if you want to look at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and what he has done to you, you will be surprised. If you want to get someone to do you good, you know, supplication to God, you're a believer in God, and someone supplicates for you, you appoint someone, you pay him a salary. All your job is to sit from nine till four till five. How much? How many hours can they work? How much can you pay them just to make dua for you? Make just sit and make dua that Allah forgive me. Brother, sister, here is some money, sit and make dua for me. No one can afford employing others to make dua for him. And no matter how much money you have, you want and you can't hire a great man of Allah to make dua for you. The Messenger of Allah is making dua for every one of us that God forgive us. We commit sins, we transgress, all our actions are reported to him, displayed before him. And there is a sound hadith about this. Hayati khayrun lakum, tuhdithuna wa yuhdathu lakum. Faitha ana mittu kanat wafati khayran lakum. تُعْرَضُ عَلَيَّ أَعْمَالُكُمْ فَإِنْ وَجَدْتُ خَيْرًا حَمِدْتُ اللَّهِ وَإِنْ وَجَدْتُ غَيْرَ ذَلِكَ اسْتَغْفَرْتُ لَكُمْ My life is good for you. You do things and I provide solutions or answers. My death is also good for you. All your actions are displayed in front of me. When I see good, I praise Allah. When I see other things, then I make dua for you. Can you believe it? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is sitting making dua for you while you're heedless. 
because of the reports, people understand and should understand now how the works of all humanity could be shown or displayed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Science brought many miracles now. And the miracles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are beyond science. And what we don't know is far beyond what we know, or the little, or the drop that we know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْرُوحِ قُلِ الْرُوحُ مِنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّي وَمَا أُوْتِيْتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا They ask you about the spirit, say the spirit is a matter that belongs to my God, you have not been given of knowledge, but a little drop. Furthermore, we say, اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Prayers and blessings be upon the Messenger of Allah. This is actually a divine command in the Quran al Karim. After Allah told us, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al Nabi, Allah and His angels send prayers upon the Prophet. Allah says, commanding us, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. All ye who believe, pray upon him. A lot of prayers and send a lot of salam upon him. So one of the most beautiful ways of coming closer to Allah is praising the Prophet and praying upon him. It brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It gives you the job of the angels. The angels are busy praising Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. You take their job and you praise Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. It's one of the best indirect way of achieving the character of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Because reading about his character, about his truthfulness, about his uh, uh, tolerance, about his uh, brave, uh, bravery, about uh, all of his beautiful character sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, beautiful traits, uh, makes us yearn to embrace his beautiful traits and virtues. The best way is making a lot of mention of him making sending prayers upon him sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim Now when you make this form of prayer these forms are reported to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam Again in a sound hadith a statement he sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam explained to us that all your prayers are displayed to me He sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam emphasized on Friday as being a special day because it is the feast of all Muslims. On Friday, he sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam hears the prayers we send upon him by his own ears. And he answers by his own tongue. Inna inda min there is an angel at my head, Allah has signed, an angel at my head that conveys to me the prayers my ummah send upon me or to me. Except on Fridays, I hear with my own ears and I answer with my own tongue. The Sahaba wondered. They were not stupid. They laid down this question. How would you answer, hear and answer when you have decayed? Because we understand the natural law, they say between brackets, the natural law, we don't have natural laws, we have divine laws. Anyway, the natural laws between brackets, people are buried, people decay. After 10 years, you won't find anything but just a small collection of bones. So how would you hear, how would you answer? He said, Allah made it forbidden for the earth to decay the flesh of prophets. This is something specific, not specific to our beloved Prophet, our messenger, the seed of all messengers. This is something that is general to all Prophets. All messengers Allah sent. Allah saved their bodies from uh, being decayed or from being eaten by worms in the soil. So he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is alive. And this is the belief of all Muslims. And you'll be surprised even Ibn Taymiyyah Ibn Qayyim al jawziyyah two controversial scholars, for example, who disagreed on some issues, on some relationships or aspects of our relationship with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, never disagreed on this principle. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is alive in his grave.